Greetings, friends. Jollis Paul here. It's time for a God tier list. I wanted to go back through and take a look at all of the different gods that I had uh, recommended, some of them that I had trashed. Uh, a lot of things have changed since I made the, the video from before. So we're going to go through and update that. I'm going to try to keep this video under 15 minutes. I won't talk about every aspect of, of the various gods, but I do want to touch on some especially notable changes and maybe provide some more justifications that I hadn't in the previous video. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I am going to include chaos this time because many people asked me to include chaos. So that's going to be in the video as well. We'll start everything out in B tier as we start talking about it now. I do have some notes over here. Aphrodite, uh, I would say uh, Aphrodite, the main problem that I have with Aphrodite actually has nothing to do with her power level or how good she is. Uh, her boons are just kind of boring uh, for the most part. And there are a couple boons that she provides that that actively make some of her abilities worse. One of them being the blown kiss uh, modifier to her cast actually sometimes messes with the hitbox of her cast. Um, and her cast is good, but it's very short range, so it's got limited uses, although it does have some very powerful uses and it's very strong, you could say. But overall, I'd say I've I've grown less excited about her and, and what she provides. The damage reduction is good, but generally in a game like this, you want to avoid damage altogether, and just a reduction of damage doesn't exactly do it. Back in the day, she used to be 50%, and then they nerfed that down to 30% damage reduction. So that combined with a fairly lackluster legendary uh, ability, I guess I'm lowering Aphrodite quite a bit. I'd put her in C tier now. I don't know. I might change my mind about that by the end of the video, but for the most part, there's a lot of things uh, that she just doesn't provide a whole lot of value for uh, in a build, and I'd rarely, rarely seek her out or take her anywhere anymore. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next we've got Ares. Ares, uh, the, the main problem with Ares, I got a lot of hate for, for how I treated Ares. The main problem with Ares is that he's split between two main ability types. He's got his doom damage and he's got slicing shot or the, the blade rifts. And so you've got boons that boost the dooms and you got boons that, that boost blade rifts. Now doom is very good. Blade rifts are very good. Some of my favorite abilities come from Ares, but the fact that you have to you have to kind of choose one and avoid the others. It's a little bit awkward, I guess. Um, very good damage. Um, I am going to raise him up a little bit from C to B tier. Uh, you know, some some notable abilities that he's got, obviously, Merciful End, um, Hunting Blades. These are some of the best duo boons in the game, can really change things. So I am raising him up, but I still think that there's a bit of a problem with with the way he's tooled out. It makes it a little bit awkward, but still a very, very solid. I, I should preface all of this with we we like we like all of the gods in, in Hades, right? We don't, we're just kind of talking generally about how I feel about them at this point. So don't take it personally if I trash your favorite god. All right, don't take it personally. Next, we're talking about our lady, our lady Artemis. Okay, so Artemis, uh, her main mechanic, I'd say, is is providing crit. Uh, she provides crit to abilities. Uh, pressure points is a notable, uh, notable boon that she provides, which lets everything have a chance to crit, which is amazing. And then you've got mark target or hunter's mark, I should say, which provides a curse. If a unit is is crit, then it's more likely that you'll receive a crit on a different enemy. And so if you've got two enemies next to each other or in the same area, you can get lots and lots of crits um, very quickly. Artemis, I'd say, provides a ton of damage and pressure points, I think, by itself does a whole lot to, to boost any run. So I pick up Artemis a lot and I think that she's used in a lot of really good builds. She's got a very excellent legendary if you're going for a cast build. I've raised her up to A tier. She's, she's way up there now, I'd say. Uh, just a lot of value. A lot of good comes out of Artemis. All right, Athena, I'll, I'll say this about Athena. She doesn't provide a whole lot of damage. Uh, damage is not the reason that you might like to take Athena. 
However, on any challenging run that I do, anytime I'm doing a, a high heat run or if I'm doing like a no hit challenge or something like that, Athena is the best option. And not only that, she the, the deflect is such a good defensive ability, um, especially on the dash. Just getting Athena's dash makes every run easier. It makes your, your chance for success it goes way up when you've got Athena's dash. Not only that, but she provides spare death defiances. So if you are in sticks and you are, you know, at the end of your end of your rope and you don't have any more death defiances left, she has the ability to replenish two if you find both of those boons. And she's got an ability that makes traps deal less damage. And if if you don't know, the, the pots or the urns that pop up in the Hades fight, those are traps. And so sometimes those are the most damaging things that you hit in, in that fight against Hades. So I put her up in S tier, okay? I, I had her in S tier before and I am having her in S tier again because doggone it, she's she belongs up there. Is, is she the one that's going to provide all the damage in your run? Probably not, but that's why you pick up other gods as well. But I just think no one else does what, what, what Athena does. No one else provides that kind of value. So I have to put her way up at the top. She just does a lot for every run that she is in. I, I think those are the main notable things that I, that I look at. Her call also is amazing. It's basically invulnerability. You get an invulnerability for a period of time and you can use all of your uh, attacks and abilities. And so you'll often end up doing a lot more damage because you don't have to worry about dodging hits and that kind of thing. Demeter, she provides chill, so slowing enemies. Her damage is pretty good, like her percentages are pretty decent. She changes the cast into a into a laser, which a lot of people really like. I feel fairly good about it. It's fun. It looks cool, but I'm not sure how powerful I think it is. I go back and forth on that one, I guess. Chill is, you can get 10 stacks of chill, which is phenomenal. That slows down enemies a lot. I think a lot of people undervalue chill as a curse. You have to get quite a few stacks before you really start to see the game starts to get a lot easier, but I think that it's it's pretty solid. The, the only problem I'd say with Demeter is that she has some pretty mediocre duo boons. I'd say some of her duo boons even make a lot of things worse. So like if I'm doing a slicing shot build, maybe I'm going for hunting blades. I don't want Demeter in my run because she'll she'll mess it up and she'll make it so I can't find hunting blades because of her icy vortex duo boon. So I put Demeter in the B tier mostly for that reason. Uh, the curse is good. She's got a pretty mediocre call. Um, her legendary provides bonus damage, basically. It's like a culling strike, but you have to get the enemy all the way down to like, I think it's 10% or 15%. Anyway, it's pretty low already. Their health is pretty low already. It's good against bosses, obviously, but. So that's Demeter, B tier. I'd say she's right there with, with Ares, maybe. I'll, I'll put her there. All right, Poseidon. This is the one, this is the one that a lot of people were flabbergasted by when I when I put Poseidon down at the very very bottom now my justification for putting him down there was knockback isn't the greatest thing in the world his legendary is pretty pretty mediocre but I talked way too much about that and did not mention that he has some of the, the greatest and craziest boons that you can find in the game like tidal dash is one of those boons that if you're in sticks and you have tidal dash it's just going to go so much easier because you're knocking enemies into the wall the chambers are very small so you get a ton of damage where they get knocked into walls it's the highest damage dash ability in the game so very very valuable just for that so he is getting a big upgrade he was in d tier and he is now in a tier i might even put him above artemis tidal dash is just that good any build if if you need damage tidal dash can provide a ton of extra damage at at no cost and then you add things like breaking wave which means that when an enemy hits a wall they create this watery explosion and that's in my mind that's actually more that was more akin to a legend legendary ability than than what he does have for a legendary ability which just adds an additional knockback and the breaking wave also knocks the enemy 
away as well. So you're getting a double knockback effect. And then if you do find the legendary, it's like they're getting knocked all over the place. It's fantastic. It's super, super fun to watch. It's fun to play. His call is one of the most fun calls in the game. You, you're riding around on a, you feel like you're on a surfboard, just hitting people. And it's a, it's a good old time. So Poseidon has gotten a big upgrade in my mind. A lot of the reasons that I put him lower down, they've changed a lot in my mind. So Ah, what can I what can I say? I change my mind sometimes it, it happens and uh, I'm not gonna apologize for it. Okay, Dionysus. Dionysus has got some solid some solid boons. He's got a cast uh, that creates festive fog which staggers enemies sometimes which is pretty good his poison or his hangover i should say his hangover can do decent damage and it's a nice like set it and forget it and if you've got like fast attack speed weapons that can be pretty good but i would say that a lot of his secondary boons aren't super great he does have strong drink which is another very top tier boon I would say for any run kind of can be a saving grace if you're finishing a fight and you're just you've got a sliver of health it's really nice to drink from that fountain and just be completely healed back to back to 100% I you know I kind of struggled with this one a little bit but I'm going to leave him in B tier I think that he's solid in the same way that that Demeter and Ares are solid but doesn't do as much as as you would hope that he does and a lot of those builds that are centered around him aren't as amazing as maybe they could be okay Hermes so Hermes is a win more god that just provides that little bit of extra that you might need if you're in a cast build of any kind hermes is fantastic because he can help your cast stones regenerate faster helps them uh, makes them drop out of enemies faster lets you cast like actually cast out the the stones faster so that's really good he can improve movement speed he's got the wombo combo where you can increase your uh speed after um, dashing by like 100% and then there's uh, if any any movement speed increases that you have also increase your damage by a certain percentage I think that's rush delivery so if you get that combination and you've got dash attacks you are gonna you've basically doubled your damage in a lot of situations and it's fantastic so Hermes sometimes doesn't have the greatest boons in the world there they can be duds because if they're not if they're not rare or epic they don't provide a huge bonus or maybe it doesn't feel that great a lot of his like attack and special uh, speed increases are a little bit lackluster maybe to some people i have demoted him down from s tier to a tier for that reason i'd say he's still he's still maybe above poseidon if they'll let me do that okay yeah he's still maybe above poseidon but maybe not s tier quality doesn't quite do everything that that athena does right okay next talking about big daddy zeus okay zeus has a lot of damage and damage is is what he has uh, <laughs> he doesn't provide a whole lot else uh, you're not gonna you're not stunning enemies you're not slowing enemies or anything like that you're just providing tons and tons of damage you might argue that it's similar to chaos in the sense that you've got lightning bolts and then you've got chain lightning and they have got different uh, mechanics for each of those but I'd say for the most part you don't care too much about the lightning bolts they don't do a whole lot of of good uh whereas the lightning strikes or sorry the chain chain like i mean doesn't do a whole, a whole lot of good whereas the lightning bolts the lightning strikes if you get double strike that like doubles your damage from lightning strikes if you get high voltage that increases the area so you're hitting more enemies with that and it becomes kind of a win more and it just is a snowball that if you keep getting zeus's boons your your build just gets better and better and better and starts to cascade out of control i'd put them right next to poseidon i guess these two together especially if they're duo boon and you get them together then you're pretty much unstoppable i'd say it's one of the strongest combinations in the game probably uh zeus and and poseidon together it's a it's a beautiful beautiful thing sea storm yeah sea storm you get those lightning strikes on every knockback fantastic stuff all right last but not least, we have Chaos. Now, a lot of people wanted me to include Chaos in this. It's difficult to include Chaos because Chaos provides uh, boons that 
have nothing they're, they're not connected to any other so like if you're thinking about your attack boon you can't get both artemis's attack boon and you know demeter's attack boon together whereas for chaos you can just infinitely stack so if you get an attack boon at the beginning of the game you can continue to get attack boons until chaos stops showing up so you can get your attack numbers to extremely high amounts they also provide cast stones which are very very hard to come by one of the only ways to increase your cast stone count is with chaos so any of those runs where you're using stygian soul where the cast stone regenerates this makes it so much better and you can sometimes in some cases infinitely cast so that's fantastic it also boosts your cast damage there's just a ton on offer from chaos so we're gonna put chaos uh we're gonna put chaos in a tier all his own the chaos tier is is where chaos belongs there's not a whole lot else i can say they provide extra money they provide extra backstab damage they, they there's a ton of different things that that they provide that you just can't find anywhere else in the game sure you have to take a little bit of damage going into their realm sure you have to deal with a curse for a while which can be a big deal but with the right with the right chaos boons your your runs are going to be insanely powerful all right friends that's going to do it for my new tier list my new hades god tier list what do you think did i get it right did i get it wrong should i stop making these videos all together <laughs> don't don't uh don't hate too hard here but yeah this is what i think I, there's nothing in d tier anymore i wouldn't say this probably represents the spread for for what boons i take or how i how i take them depending on the situation of course but uh yeah what do you think leave a comment below really appreciate it like the video if you enjoyed this video i did keep it down to about 15 minutes so i'm proud of myself for that i didn't ramble on too much we'll catch you in the next video I'm excited to see you. Thanks for being you. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you later.